Hey guys, Enzo Flojo here, and this is the Mabuhai Basketball Podcast. The only show that brings you the latest scoop on everything basketball in the Philippines. Whether you're a diehard fan, a casual observer, or just, you know, looking for some good old, uh, good old-fashioned hoop talk, you've come, you've come to the right place. So whether you're a fan of the PBA, the UAAP, the NCAA, Gilas, or any other league in the Philippines, we've got you covered. And if you're just discovering the exciting world of Philippine basketball, well, we're here to guide you through every dunk, crossover, three-pointer, and every controversial college transfer. Now get ready to be entertained, informed, and inspired as you delve into the world of Philippine basketball. This is the Mabuhay Basketball Podcast. Let's talk some hoops. For this episode, we'll spotlight some fan comments on some of the most recent and biggest player movements in college basketball. We're going to look at some fan reactions to the PBA Governors Cup Finals and discuss the tournaments that are awaiting our Gilas Pilipinas basketball teams. First, let's begin by looking at some uh, reactions no? to the uh, first two games of the PBA Governors Cup Finals for 2023. Now, before we look at some reactions, before we go through the uh, top scorers, top performers of the games, first, I just want to say that Coach Yang Giao is an absolutely awesome analyst. No, I mean, I honestly would not mind seeing him as a full-time analyst in the PBA or wherever. You know, I mean, in game one, kakasimula pa ng game, jump ball na jump ball. No? He, he lists the names of players and coaches who were with him in NLEX just a year ago, but who are all now in TNT. And, you know, just hearing Coach Yen do that, that was pretty amazing. That's content gold. Of course, there's a lot of subtext there. We're not going to dive into that. I don't know. Maybe we can get Coach Yang on the pod at some point in the future. But Coach Yang Giao, one of the best uh, guys to analyze the game. His brilliant mind and all the insight. Uh, funny guy as well. So, Coach Yang, um, if you're done coaching, I hope that's going to be a long time in the future. No, but once you're done, you're going to be an awesome analyst. So let's go to game one. So game one, Governors Cup Finals, of course, are featuring uh, the two uh, two of the best teams in the PBA. Of course, two of the most stacked teams in the PBA. We're talking about the Barangay Hinebra Gin Kings and, of course, TNT Catropa. So for game one, I'm going to read some excerpts, excerpts from a recap from uh, one of our top writers from Tiebreaker Times, Justin Bacnis. No? So Hinebra gave out an important lesson on keeping emotions in check, especially in a stage as big as the 2023 PBA Governors Cup Finals, beating TNT 102 to 90 to take Game One Sunday night at the Smart Araneta Coliseum. No Kelly Williams for TNT guys. They lost Justin Chua minutes into the game because of a knee injury. So TNT for most of this game they were undersized and undermanned. On the other hand, on the other end of the floor, of course, Hinebra, the defending Governor's Cup champions, and they had naturalized Filipino, one of the best imports, I think, in the you know, modern history of the PBA, Justin Brownlee. And to nobody's surprise, si Brownlee talaga nagpasabog. No? Um, 31 points to end the game, 17 of those points coming in the first quarter alone of Game 1. No? Um, and, you know, he was just pretty amazing. The biggest reason they won game one. He also had 12 rebounds in that game. And then, of course, Jamie Malonzo from La Salle uh, doing really well as well. 21 points, 8 rebounds for him. And uh, best player of the conference, front runner. Uh, Phil German, big man, Christian San Hardinger. Double double, 16 points and 11 rebounds. And, of course, reigning MVP, Scotty Thompson. Finishing with a triple double, 10 points, 13 boards, and 11 assists. So that's, by my count, I think his eighth career triple double already. Fifth in the playoffs. I can't wait to see Scotty Thompson in the SEA Games, in the World Cup, and in the Asian Games. He has to be there. He's a reigning MVP. Leading TNT, on the other hand, was Ron De Hollis Jefferson, their import. 30 points, 20 rebounds, 5 assists, monster numbers. But they got the L. They got the loss. So yeah. And uh, Mikey Williams doing well. Calvin of Tana doing well in game one as well. Combining for 39 points. Talong-talong TNT sa Hinebra. 
One interesting fan comment that I saw on the YouTube uh, channel of One Sports for the highlights of Game One was uh, was this comment. It, it really caught my eye because it was all caps, and the name of the commenter was Beastman TV sixty eight thirty. That's a really bang up great name. Um, all caps store, all caps guys. When Rondé bragged that he's good, what he did not know is that Brownlee is not just good. Rather, he's better with the whole team. He's not selfish, unlike Rondé. NSD for life. So obviously, he's a Hinebra fan. Obviously, very, very happy that he never got a win in Game 1. But probably also unhappy because they lost Game 2. And I'm going to read the excerpt of the of a recap from Game 2. Again, from Justin Bacnes of Tiebreaker Times. 3 and D proved key as TNT ran past Hinebra 95-83. To bounce back in a big way and take Game 2 of the 2023 PBA Governors Cup Finals Wednesday evening at the Smart Araneta Coliseum. Booming triples by R.R. Pogoy and Mikey Williams highlighted the Tropangiga's 13-4 finishing kick on the way to tying the best of seven series at one game apiece. All right. And all that despite suffering another tough blow as Justin Shua was ruled out because his knee injury turned out to be actually an ACL injury. So prayers up to Justin Shua. Hope he recovers as quickly as possible. So for game two, no Kelly Pare, no Justin Shua. It was again Hollis Jefferson leading the way for TNT. No surprise. 23 points, 19 rebounds, 9 assists, borderline triple double for Hollis Jefferson. Enough to get the big win. Wire to wire win for TNT in game two. The fan comment that caught my eye for this one is uh, from a TNT fan uh, named Prince Montserrat 7560. All eyes on Calvin of Tana. Nagpapakita na ang, once, ang one-time NCAA MVP ng San Beda. More playing time rin si X-Factor ng TNT si Glenn Cobuntin. Ang two-way player ng TNT. Let's go TNT. Kaya natin to go for the goal. Triple fire emoji from Princess or Prince Montserrat right there. And if TNT is going to win or steal this championship from Hinebra, because let's, let's face it, Hinebra is the odds on favorite. It's going to be these X Factor guys, these, these role players who need to step up. Hollis Jefferson is going to get his numbers. Mikey Williams probably is going to get, get his numbers as well. But the other guys, you know, Oftana, um, Kobuntin, uh, even Pogoy. These are the guys who really need to step up. Eram, obviously, because there's no Chua out there, no Kelly Williams as well. Now, remember, Ginebra is the king of the Governor's Cup. They've won, if if memory serves me, they've won five of the last six Governor's Cup trophies. And there's been no no calendar year since, I think, 2016, I think, no? where Ginebra has not won at least one. Um, conference in the PBA. So this is their turf. So super good luck to TNT. Kailangan going to be very, very tough. Especially again, no Kelly and no Justin inside. Pairs up to those two. Hope they recover as quickly as possible. Game 3 is Friday, April 14. Alright, next up. From the PBA, we're going to go to Giles. There's a connection yan. Kasi for many, for many Filipino basketball fans, though, they feel like the Gilas Pilipinas team we're gonna see in the SEA Games at least, no, it's probably gonna be mostly made up of players from both these teams in the Governors Cup Finals, Hinebra and TNT. Now, interestingly enough, a couple of days ago, it was reported that Gilas was actually supposed to have practice, but it was cancelled because only seven players confirmed or confirmed attendance, no, in in that practice, no. Huh? I'm re- going to read uh, an excerpt from the story uh, from Spin.ph, uh, written by Carlos Sacamos. Gilles Pilipinas is encountering manpower problems less than a month before the Southeast Asian Games in Cambodia. National coach Chot Reyes on Monday bared only seven players in a 28-man pool confirmed to attend practice later in the night, forcing the coaching staff to cancel the once-a-week training session. It's a far cry from the 17 players who showed up in their first Monday night practice last week, April 3, when Hinebra and TNT stars came just hours after attending the PBA Governors Cup Finals press conference. 
All right. So this comes a month before the SEA Games officially kick off May 5 in Cambodia in the capital city of Phnom Penh. Okay. And yes, that's how you pronounce it. Phnom Penh. Okay. So obviously a lot of unpack here. Maybe we'll spend one whole episode talking about Gilas and previewing their campaign in, in the SEA Games. But for now, we're going to focus on two comments. Now, the first fan comment uh, that I saw about this, I think this was on Twitter, is from a user named Carl Pentero. So why not just send the entire Ginebra team? Of course, with Tim Cohn as a head coach and Brownie as a naturalized player, considered as local naman siguro sila Stan Harding and Pringle sa SEA Games, no? And uh, yeah, probably. I mean, SEA Games eligibility rules are very different from FIBA rules. No? In fact, most of the or a very big weight of eligibility in any SEA Games event is, is dependent on the host country. And based on the little that I've, I've read, I think Cambon is going to be uh, quite lenient with the eligibility rules, you know, especially for basketball, since I think they have their own um, Cambodian foreigners who are coming in to reinforce their national squad as well. So I'm pretty confident that you know, all our field force actually, as long as you have Philippine passports, of course, will be able to you know be eligible in the Southeast Asian Games. So we're probably going to see Justin Brownlee, and if we're going to take the core of both TNT and Ginebra, then you know Stan Harding are probably going to be there, Pringle probably going to be there, Malonzo probably going to be there on the other end, uh, Mikey Williams I I think should be there as well in consideration at least. So, so many possible combinations for, for that SEA Games team now. Another fan comment I saw, uh, again on Twitter, is from Donski17. No? Given yan, 10 players na sa finals, tapos kakahuli week lang, nasa out of town pa mga yan, relax lang. Meron tayong Justin, Justin Noypi. Last time, wala kaya, kaya relax lang. Relax, relax lang kayo mga haters, mga kabalik gold medal sa atin, 100 Percent. I love the confidence from this guy, and but the underlying thing with that comment is the pressure has never been higher for any team entering the Southeast Asian Games because this is supposed to be a redeemed team of sorts. Okay, again, a redeemed team of sorts because again, we infamously lost the gold medal last year. Okay, in Vietnam when Indonesia beat us. In the final, so Indonesia is probably gonna send a strong team again. They don't want to lose the gold medal. Um, we should assume that Thailand will probably send a strong team. Vietnam will probably send a pretty improved team. But last I heard, um, Christian Ju Zhang, one of their top players from last year, is not gonna play. So I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how that goes. No, but we have to assume that the competition level in Cambodia is gonna be at least as high as last year. So that's going to be pretty tough for for Gilles. No? If, if Tim Cohn is a coach of that team, good. But for now, it's Coach Chot. Coach Chot very, very capable. I know he has a lot of critics out there. Okay. Um, but right now, he's the head coach. And honestly, objectively, naman, guys, Coach Chot, very, very capable, experienced head coach for the national team. We'll see how it goes. Okay. But in reality... There's just so much uncertainty surrounding the SEA Games, diba? I mean, in terms of priorities, this calendar year, obviously, the FIBA World Cup is at the very top. And then I'm not sure, honestly. I'm probably going to post this as, as a poll on Twitter, um, maybe tomorrow or at some point. I'm not sure which is more important, reclaiming the gold medal in the SEA Games or doing well in the Asian Games. Remember, my Asian Games pa tayo in October, later this year, It'll be in uh, in Hangzhou, China. Okay. Remember, we've never we, we haven't finished in the top four in the Asian Games in more than twenty years. Last time we finished top four in the Asian Games basketball tournament was way back in two thousand two in Busan. And you guys remember that game uh, in the semifinals? Uh, we lost to Korea. Heartbreaker. Big three dagger dagger shot by Lee Sang Min. Then we lost in the battle for third place to Kazakhstan. Okay, there you go. Now, last thing we're going to talk about uh, in this episode: player movements in college basketball. Now, this is 
undoubtedly the hottest and about developing story in the Philippine basketball right now, at least he's on my feed and in my group chats. And it already started, you know, when Francis Lopez, my former player, my former student in Ateneo, when he committed to UP. Followed by the commitment of, you know, the three Pesaw Green Hills kids, all born 04, all of them also part of Batangilas under 18 last year. We're talking about Seven Gagate, Luis Pablo, Josh Coronel. Coronel's going to be there next year, but he has one more year for La Salle in the NCAA. And then that was followed by the commitments of Jared Bahai and Phil Am, big man Sean Alter as well. And I mean, to be honest, the biggest moves all center around UP anyway. Now, honestly, on, on one hand, that's refreshing. Okay, honestly, yeah. I'm not a UP alum. Um, I have a lot of friends and family who came from UP, but as someone who did not, you know, graduate from UP, I think this is still very refreshing. Because remember, na as recently as season 78, UP was a three-win team. Heck, I mean, in season 77, they had a bonfire for one win. If if I'm not mistaken, I think that was season season 77 when they had that, that one win, bonfire, and now. Just what you know, a handful of years later, they're at the nexus, the, the peak, no, uh, the zenith of, of the UAP recruitment wars. In some way, you know, years past, UP was the runt of the litter, the ugly ducklings, and now, sila na yung alphas, sila na yung magandang swan. They've they've disrupted the established order in UAP basketball, no? and and not surprisingly, if I'm being completely objective, not surprisingly. Those who have been used to getting the top recruits suddenly have to deal with the emergence of this new major player, right? The previous recruitment powers set the table decades past. And they set the unwritten rules. And now UP has risen to the occasion and sort of rewritten the rules. Disruptors, right? Disruptors, kumbaga. And, you know, we don't know where this rabbit hole is going to lead. We're not so sure. But we're in it already. We have some rumors that Phil foreigners like you know Quentin Miliora Brown, six foot ten, six foot eleven. They have Bion Riley, even have six foot nine Kamaka Hepa, maybe coming in. I don't know. Those are rumors, okay? The mga nababasa ko sa group chat, sa Twitter, sa mga forum. We're not sure. We'll see. We have top coaches like Coach Tab Baldwin, Coach Goldwyn Monteverde, Coach Topix Robinson all going abroad to scout and woo prospective recruits as well. Okay, I mean, right now, honestly, based on the feed and the group chats I'm part of, para mas excited pa tayo mga Filipino basketball fans malaman sa pupunta yung next big recruit kaysa malaman ko sa pupunta si Victor Wenbanyama diba, sa NBA draft um, later this year. And there have been many interesting comments left and right about college recruitment. But here's one that really kind of made my head shake when I read it uh, a couple of days ago. And this is a fan comment from a Twitter user named De Campanilla. Okay, And this is not even a reply to one of my tweets. I think this was a reply to a reply uh, from, from one of my tweets. So, it's like the reply of one follower. LOL, you know, if a player is really good, he will get his minutes. The implication that a team should not recruit quality players is laughable. And who said no one has left Ateneo because of playing time? Ask Robert Bollick. Actually, a pretty insightful comment, but that last part, no? insinuating that Robert Bollick came from Ateneo got me shaking my head, kind of laughing as well. He probably meant someone else. I'm not sure exactly whom he meant. Was it, I don't know, a recruit that left because he was not probably going to get playing time? I'm sure there have been a, a lot of examples of that. The one that, that kind of comes to my mind is, is Eli Ramos. No? Dwight Ramos has a younger brother. He never made Team A, but of course he was in Ateneo and then he left now in Adamson. Um, so I don't know. I, mean, I, I never knew that Robert Bollick pala went to Ateneo. Obviously he didn't. Uh, but man, if he did, if Robert Bollick went to Ateneo, man, he would have balled out hard. Uh, that's for sure. Man. Uh, but we're going to leave it at that for tonight. And we're only whetting your appetite no? because we're going to discuss many of these issues in a much deeper way, more meaningful way, in standalone episodes or a series of episodes in the coming days and weeks. Again, what we want is for this podcast to be a daily basketball podcast for all Filipino basketball fans. Okay? All right. So we have a lot of spicy, tea-spinning topics lined up for you guys. 
In fact, for our next episode, we'll discuss some interesting questions like, should players choose playing time or go to the highest bidder? Should student athletes' offers and benefits be regulated? Is the concept of you know, uh, amateur sports outdated or dead? As always, we'll spotlight some fan comments on these big issues. And it actually drops tomorrow, so watch out for that. So again, thanks for tuning in to this episode of the Mabuhay Basketball Podcast. We hope you enjoyed listening as much as we enjoyed creating this episode. Don't forget to follow and subscribe so you never miss an episode. And if you have a moment, please leave us a rating and review. It really helps us out. You can also read my stuff on clutchpoints.com, tiebreaker times, and of course, feeble.basketball. Follow me on Twitter at HoopNut or Instagram at TheHoopNut for more content and updates. Until next time, keep betting on yourself, shooting your shot, and seizing the moment.